Hello, everybody. Guess who's coming back from the deceased of yesterday? I felt like I was deceased anyway. It's raining again, of course, but the doggies gotta go out. Anyway, have any of y'all been watching the Murdoch trial? Murdoch? Murdoch? I don't know. Some people say Murdoch and some people say Murdoch. I just think it's odd that it sounds like murder. Murder. Y'all remember watching Angela Lansbury and she'd say murder. <laughs> anyway, I just think it's kind of funny that they're, that his last name kind of sounds like murder. Anyway, I, I've also been watching a lot of La Angela Lansbury the past few days. But yesterday, while I was incapacitated from my headache, I sat and watched, I didn't really watch, I listened to a bunch of YouTube videos and Netflix about the Myrtle trial and trying to get caught up. I didn't get caught up because apparently you can't get caught up for a, what was it, a three week trial in a day? Anyway, but I did watch a lot of videos and I did learn a lot of things. I did be learning a lot of things. And that family, who was messed up? So, if you haven't seen the Netflix series, I suggest you watch it. If you haven't watched it, go watch it because it's, it's interesting in itself. But then I started watching YouTube videos of the different people in the courtroom, like the, uh, was she a caregiver? for his mom, for Alex, Alex's mom. It's pronounced Alec, but I don't know how to say that plural, plurally. Is that a word? I don't think that's a word. Plurally, without making it sound like Alex's, Alex's mom. I guess that would be the way to do it. And he, on the night of the murder, I don't know why I'm saying it like that, but he went over there and was carrying a blue tarp and she remembered what clothes he was wearing, which oddly enough was not the same clothes he had on when the police arrived after he called 911, even though it was the same night. He was wearing different clothes. Mm. And uh, so that was odd. But I watched a video this morning where these guys were talking about you know, his body language and what all of that means, which I found very interesting. I mean, cause you know, I'm a people person, a people person, I'm not a people person. I'm a people watcher anyway. So to hear them talking about what all his different body movements and all that meant was very interesting. I mean, I already knew some of it about the eye movements and stuff like that, but when he was sitting in the car, he had his head down, so you couldn't see the way his eyes were moving. Because, you know, you can tell if somebody's lying when their mouth's moving. No, I'm just kidding. You can tell when somebody's lying by the way they move their eyes, right? That It's on Google. You can verify it. Come on, babe. Come on, jump. I got you. I got you, girl. I ain't gonna let you go. I ain't gonna let you go. So, when you're facing someone, you're looking at their right. But when it's on yourself, it's your left. Okay? So, left, when you look to the left, you're actually remembering. If you look to the right, you're constructing, making up. You know, like, I might tell y'all a story that might not be true. So, oh, I just did it the wrong way. So, it's my right is I'm constructing a story. But if I'm trying to remember something, I would look to the left. So, of course, if you're facing me, you would be, you know, it would be your right. So, anyway, if you're facing somebody, right for remember. But if it's you, it's left for remember. Does that make any sense whatsoever? Anyway, it's like when you're looking to the left and up, you're trying to remember 
uh, something that you saw. If you're looking to the left and straight, you're trying to remember, I think it's a sound. And if you're looking to the left and down, you're trying to remember a feeling. Isn't that interesting? Google it, girls and boys. Google it. It's in there. Ain't that right? This little girl never lies, do you? Mm -mm. She never lies. Anyway, so they were talking about his posturing and how he was, they called it the butterfly pattern, where he was opening his knees up and then closing his knees and how a man, when he's afraid, will protect himself, protect his genitalia, and that when a woman is afraid, she more protects her stomach like they were saying her uterus or her, you know, her, her women parts without actually, you know, the poly pocket. But anyway, um, I don't know about that as far as me. I, I, I don't remember when I've been afraid like that to protect my stomach. But I do know that when... I hear bad news, it hurts my heart kind of news. I know I take my hand up and I put it over my heart. And I think that's, using that logic, I think that's me, like, pr protecting my heart kind of thing. Does that make sense? Anyway, but they could tell by his posturing, his body language, his, the things he were, he were saying, mm, that he was saying that he... Basically, he was BSing. And so they asked him, you know, when you first got here, what did you see? And he said, well, I saw my boy. And he talks like, you know, they all talk like Foghorn Leghorn from the cartoons. But anyway, he was like, well, I saw my boy. And they said, what did you do? And he said, well, I walked up to, you know, see Paul laying there. And then I was going to go over to Miss Maggie. And Maggie's his wife. And no, I didn't go over there yet because I tried to turn Paul over. And he said, when I tried to turn him over, his cell phone fell out of his pocket. Paul's did, not Alex. So, he said, I reached for it to check, or he said something along those lines, and then he said, no, and, and so I just left it, and then I went over to check on my wife. What I believe he was checking for is to see if his son had a video, because they were at the kennels, and where they kept their hunting dogs. And one of the dogs had a problem with its tail. So he had called this guy. And I'm not sure who this guy is as far as if he takes care. I think he takes care of the dogs. And his son had called this guy. And he said, well, I'm going to hang up and I'm going to call you back on FaceTime so I can show you the dog's tail. And if that don't work, then I'll send you a video of the dog's tail, right? So they asked the guy, when you were on the phone with Paul, did you hear anyone else? And he said, yes. And they said, who did you hear? And he said, I heard Mr. Murdoch. And they said, did you hear anyone else? And he said, I heard Miss Maggie. So I think he talked to him and then he tried to FaceTime him, and he said it was glitching. So I think he may have sent him the video, and they heard on the video that Paul was out there, even though he had lied. Not Paul. I mean, Paul was out there. But that Alec was out there, and they heard him on that video, and I think that's why he was reaching for Paul's cell phone but then realized he was telling on himself, and he stopped. That's just my opinion. They said, did you touch the bodies? And he said, well, I tried to use caution, but I did check for a pulse. Now, not to be gruesome, but from what I understand, 
there wasn't much to check for a pulse on, right? But anyway, maybe that's just a reactionary thing. I don't know. But anyway, I thought that was odd that when retelling, you know, when he was telling the police what he saw, I mean, he stopped and, and tried to act like he was crying, but I was like, he didn't really sound like he's crying, you know? I don't know. Maybe he is. I've never heard him cry before, but I just wasn't falling for it. And then he said, I called 911, and she was real nice. I'm sorry, you remember the 911 operator being nice to you? That's what you remember? That's what you comes into your mind right now? Really? Really, Alec? Because most people probably would not remember that the 911 operator was nice. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm glad she was nice. Because I'm sure there are some that are not so nice. But, really? That's what you remember? Is that she was nice? Hmm. Anyway. Um, but they, it, it was very interesting. It was a very interesting video when they talked about uh, the things that he said and how he, how his body reacted to what he was saying. And then he started talking about something and they said you could tell he was excited because his legs started bouncing up and down. What was he talking about then? Was he talking about the dogs or something? But then the thing that got me, I don't know if this was in the police car. Like I said, I did this all day yesterday. So I may get some of my stories mixed up with where I got the information from. But they asked him about his guns. They say, can you tell me, can you, I, you know, can you describe your, your gun, your shotgun or whatever? And he said, well, it's camouflage. And it's either, uh, I'm making up gun names. These are not the names they said. They start with a B, like a Bertinelli, Bertinelli. I don't know. A Valerie Bertinelli. I don't know. They said like a, a was it a, he said, let me see, was it a Glock or a Ruger? I mean, that wasn't them, but that's what he said. I said, now, come on. A man who hunts will be able to tell you exactly what kind of gun, guns, plural, he has. He don't have to think what kind of guns he has, what kind of shotgun this is. No. I mean, come on now. <laughs> I may not be able to tell you about uh, all my dad's guns, but my dad can tell you all about his guns. I can tell you what kind I have. Are you jumping down? Okay. All righty. Um, let's see. There was the, on the Netflix series, there was the thing about his son being on the boat with all, the, all of his friends. And one of the girls on the boat, I guess she fell off the boat, and she drowned. They couldn't find her, but the father, Mr. Alec, showed up, and they were ready to pin it on a friend of his who was in the boat, Mallory's boyfriend, and that was one thing that, you know, he lied about and tried to cover up, and then Paul, the one he killed, because he has been found guilty, in case y'all don't know that. But, I don't know if I've already said that. But anyway, uh, I believe it was Paul was in a romantic relationship with, I think his name was Jimmy? Anyway, another man. And I don't think Daddy liked that too much. So, Jimmy got killed because he was in the road. He was, I uh, can't remember if his car broke down or something anyway. It was a hit and run. There was just death and destruction all amount around this man. His housekeeper fell down the steps. The dogs jumped on her, and she fell backwards. And so this nutcase, Alec, 
told the family of the housekeeper, well, I'll just file a lawsuit against myself. And, you know, y'all can get the, um, the earnings off that lawsuit because, you know, my, it's, my dogs are responsible for the death of your mother because she didn't die right then, but she never could really talk. She didn't make any sense when she talked. I don't know if she had had a stroke, but they said she was just mumbling. And I think there was a lot of uh, questions about it because I don't think all of her injuries quite lined up with what they said happened. But anyway, he filed a lawsuit against himself and he won the lawsuit, but then he never gave her family the money. I mean, these people are nutso, but he's going to be sentenced at 930 in the morning. Yeah. But it reminds me of a court case we had in Cobb County back in the 90s. His name was Fred Tokars, and Fred was a prominent attorney in Atlanta. And instead of killing his wife himself, he hired someone to kill her. And that guy killed her in the front seat of the vehicle she was driving it was like out in a field and their two sons were in the back seat and saw what happened and saw the back of her head blown off yeah what a stand-up guy he was the shooter and uh mr tokars mr tokars died in prison uh with I think pancreatic cancer, but anyway, that was that was a terrible case. He was in jail. I want to say he was probably in our jail for three years, three to five years, I think. But see, he was waiting. He was waiting to go to court to be sentenced because a jail is a pretrial facility meaning you stay there until you go to trial. Now, sometimes people are sentenced and they stay in the jail to serve their time if it's like, you know, less than a year. If they get 12 months, they can stay in the jail and not go to prison. But if they get a year, they have to go to prison. Yeah, 12 months and a year is the same thing, except in sentencing. And 12 months, you can serve time in jail, but a year, you have to serve time in a prison. Yeah. Even if you get 24 months, you can serve time in a jail. But if you get two years, you got to go to prison. It's just how it's written on the court papers. Yeah. You learn something new every day, don't you? Mm -hmm. But anyway, he I, I want to say he was there three to five years waiting on his court date. Court dates. He had multiple court dates. And uh, he had, he was in one of the segregation rooms where he had his little cell, and then you come out, and there was like a, it was almost like a, a foyer, where he had a little table and all his books, because he was, you know, he didn't really defend himself per, per se, but he, he did his work to try to get out of it, but he didn't get out of it, so those poor children, but they went to live with her mom in Florida, and they did a, TV show on them. I don't remember when it was, but it was like the 40th anniversary or something. And I think her mom was, her her mom and dad, whoever, was, um, you know, fairly well-to-do. And I think they probably got the boys the help that they needed mentally to get through that. But they seem to be very well-rounded adults now from just, you know, the little thing that I saw, but anyway, there's evil people in this world, right? But I'm telling you, that whole, Carolyn described it to me as classic southern gothic horror tale. I'm pretty sure are the words that she used. 
And I'd be daggum if that is not a great description of this case. I mean, and and the all the attorneys sounded just like foghorn, leghorn. They were so southern, just sweet tea, just dripping off their lips. If for nothing else, you should watch it just to hear the southern accents because they are rich, I tell you. They are just rich with this southernness. <sighs> yeah, anyway. But it was interesting. It was way more interesting than than I ever thought it would be. You know, I mean, it's a murder trial. Okay, well. But no, there's a lot of layers to this family and a lot of layers to this murder trial. So anyway, I enjoyed all of that. I enjoyed um, seeing all that about, you know, his body posturing. And I mean, don't get me wrong. I hate that it happened, of course. And one son is still alive. Now, I don't know if the son that's still alive is the one that had the alter ego of Timmy who turns evil when he drinks or if that's the one that was unalived. If anybody knows that, you can tell me. But I would love to hear what you think in the comments. I would love for y'all to tell me if you watched it, if you agree with the uh, sent up, uh, not sentence, with the um, the guilty verdict. I would love to know if you agree with the guilty verdict or if you believe he's innocent. I would love to know if you believe he's innocent, why you believe he's innocent. Because I think there's a lot of evidence to prove why we think he's guilty. There's a lot. Yeah. So I would like to know why you think he's innocent. Someone I was reading in the comments last, I'm sorry, I don't know why every time I make a video, my nose starts itching. That lady who commented on one of my videos yesterday and told me that I needed to blow my nose, she'd be really upset that I was scratching the end of my nose. She said, you need to stop making this video and go blow your nose. And I was like, well, since this was a year and a half ago, that's going to be a little difficult. <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> Y'all, please don't think that these comments bother me. They really don't. I promise you they don't. And they're not going to make me stop making these videos. I just, it just blows my mind that people do it. But they don't bother me. So, I mean, you don't have to comfort me. Because I'm not, I'm not at all disturbed by anything they say. They're not attacking me. They're just dumb. Like... You need to blow your nose. Nobody cares what you eat for dinner. Okay. Nobody cares what you eat for dinner either. But what'd you have for dinner? Because I might care. Hmm. I had a baked potato with barbecue. Just in case you was wondering. Anyway, that's enough of that. So I'm going to try to hurry up and get this edited and get it posted so y'all can watch it before midnight tonight. So anyway, let me know what you thought of any of this, if you watched it, if you didn't really give a rat's butt about it, or if this was your first time hearing about it, you know, you can let me know that too. I didn't care a rat's butt about it till yesterday, and yesterday I just, I dove in head first, and I was like, wow, this is very interesting. So, hmm. anyway, y'all have a great rest of your day. And I will talk to you on the next Tracy Tries. Remember that I love you and Jesus loves you. And I hope he's coming back soon because people be crazy. Okay? Okay, bye. Say bye. Okay, bye.